The other thing to think about when you're looking for a domain name is you want to think about making something that's more like a hub site rather than just a personal blog. You want to think about something that can be more. Um, for example, this is the passive voice. It's a lawyer's thoughts on authors self-publishing and traditional publishing. The passive voice gets a lot of traffic because it's a self-publishing blog. It's not an author website. So that means he can talk about anything that has to do with self-publishing. And a lot of people will be interested in what he's saying because it's more general, helpful information, not just like a journal. If your author website is just, you know, what you did today, what you ate, it's not going to be relevant for anybody. And they're not really going to care unless you're a huge famous bestseller. And even then, it won't be that interesting. Um, he has links to some author websites. For example, the author website of Hugh Howey, which is fine. Oh, I see. That's not a link to his site. Um, a lot of author websites, like Hugh Howey, also talks a lot about self-publishing. And he does it under his author name. And that's fine, because he's building kind of an author platform around his name, but also because he's a really big best-selling author. People care about what he's talking about because they assume he knows what he's doing because he sold a lot of books. If you are not coming from the same standpoint and you're trying to talk about self-publishing but you don't have a lot of best-selling books, it's not going to be quite as effective and you won't get as much traffic. Um, there's also Joel Friedlander's site. Joe Conrath has a nice author website. And those are also people who, they have their own books, but they talk more generally about um, topics that are going to appeal to more people. Like Joe Conrath, he has some best-selling books, but he also talks a lot about self-publishing and about being an author. Same thing with uh, David Gogran. I'm not sure how to say David's last name, unfortunately. I should know that. Um, Joel Friedlander has a site that's actually The Book Designer. So he, he doesn't have joelfriedlander.com. He has The Book Designer, where he talks about book design. That's his platform, but he also sells some books on his site. Seth Godin has a site. I think it's sethgodin.com, but I don't remember right now. Um, so when you're thinking about making an author website, don't just limit it to your author name. You want to think about what are you offering? What's the platform that you're going to be offering? I'll show you some of my other sites. Well, this is Hugh. I'll show you Hugh Howie's site real quick because um, it's pretty styled towards his readers. It's more kind of a techno thriller, nuclear symbol. Um, but it's, it's well done. He's got a lot of options. He has a lot of different kind of books. And they're in pretty different genres, which makes it kind of difficult to design the site. Like the design of this site doesn't really match all of his books. Whereas if he had chosen something more simple, then it wouldn't be so contrasting. Another author website, or website I set up a while ago is um, Edward Cullen Sucks. So for people who are interested in paranormal romance, especially, the idea of this website was searching for a better paranormal paramour. So searching for a better paranormal romance lover than Edward Cullen of Twilight. And so with that platform, I'm able to talk about paranormal romance in general. I can blog about uh, book reviews for other paranormal authors, but I can also open it up to guest posts if other paranormal romance authors want to write articles for this website, they would be able to, which frees me up from making all the content. Or I could even, um, I can hire a writer and say, I want you to write, you know, 100 articles about paranormal romance to put on this website. I'll show you later how you can think up blog ideas really quickly. But with a blog, if I have a blog like this that's more general about paranormal romance, and if I pay someone to write 100 articles about paranormal romance or some book reviews, or I let other authors post on my blog. Um, I have a write for us button up on top. What that's going to do is I'll have a lot of content here. Here's Dracula Untold, so I can do movie reviews about Dracula. 
I can write about Only Lovers Left Alive or the Vampire Academy. So I can be writing about a lot of other pop fiction things that are related to this genre, which will make it much easier for me to get traffic. And once I have the traffic, I could send them to my other author website, or I could send them, I could have my books, like if I had paranormal romance books, I could put them on the site as well. Because this is more of a specific genre site, I can't put some of my books. I couldn't put all of my books if I have dystopian or if I have things that aren't paranormal romance. They wouldn't really fit on this blog. But at the same time, this blog is more genre focused. So specific readers who like vampire romances or paranormal romances, they may enjoy the style of this site because it appeals more to them than my the other site that I just bought, which was the... Um, urban epic site, which is going to be a little bit broader and it's going to appeal to more people, but not be quite as specifically targeted. Anyway, so I just wanted to say that instead of focusing really on just your books or just your author name, try to think of your platform. What are you going to talk about more than just like once you've introduced yourself and you talk about your books, what else are you going to write about? What's your theme? What's your value? What are you giving people that because remember, you're not just trying to appeal to your readers or your fans, you're trying to build something that other people, readers who don't know who you are yet, if they're searching around online, they may find some of your articles on accident because they're about topics that they're interested in. And that's how you find new fans who don't know you, who will be intrigued by your offer to sign up for your books, start reading your books, and hopefully they'll become real fans who are passionate about your books and they buy everything else that you write. Um, in the next video, I bought this. Um, oh, I was also going to mention the Kill Zone because it's another. The Kill Zone is interesting because it's a multi-author site, so it's several thriller and mystery writers who blog together, which makes it really great because you're going to have difficulty getting enough content on your blog. But if you partner, and you can think about it this way, like if instead of having, if you're going to write paranormal romance. Instead of having an author blog, you want to have a community blog so that you can approach maybe 50 other paranormal romance authors and say, hey, I'd like to start a community blog focusing on paranormal romance. Everybody can submit articles. They'll link back to your main author blog. Focusing on a collaborative effort, effort like that will make it much easier to get traffic and to build quickly so that you can get something like this. The Kill Zone gets a lot of traffic um, and they write a lot of stuff, but they also have several authors. Um, they probably have, yeah, the different author bios. So there's several different authors who write together to make this blog successful because they're producing a lot more content, but they also have the links to their main sites and links to their books. That's the kind of thing you want to be focused on because if you're starting an author platform with nothing and building up your own traffic, it's going to take a long time to see any traction and to get the kind of traffic that's going to sell books for you. So when you're starting off, I mean, on the one hand, you do kind of want your own landing page so that when people finish reading your book, you can send them back to your website with your landing page so they can sign up to your email list and not a, not a general one. On the other hand, starting a more general multi-author blog like this will let you grow much faster, more quickly by networking with other authors in your genre and helping to support each other. And that's the kind of thing you want to think about doing. Even like when you're making a Facebook page, if you make a Facebook page for your author website, if I made like Derek Murphy books as a Facebook page, it'd be really difficult to get fans for that page. Whereas if I was making a multi-author site, like if I set up something for Edward Cullen Sucks as a paranormal romance blog, it'd make it much easier to build a, a Facebook page that really gets people to join. Because when people join Facebook pages, they don't want to support other people. When people join Facebook pages, they're commenting on themselves. You join Facebook pages based on your interests and what you like, and you know that people are going to see them. So it's kind of a statement about, about yourself. So you want to make a Facebook group that people can join and participate in, not just follow like a like a platform. 
Um, we'll talk more about that later. In the next video, I'm just going to start setting up my author blog. Now that I've bought urbanepics.com, I'm going to install WordPress and start to design it a little bit.